Welcome to another uh, episode of Razor Blade Society TV. I'm here with Carl with Angel Spit, and um, we're going to be talking about some of his gear here in a second. But um, tell us a little bit about how the tour is going with KMFDM. It's awesome. Can I say fuck? Yes. Yeah. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> um, it's well, it's great because we're getting exposed to the audience, and the KMFDM audience are fucking brilliant. I've got to stop saying fuck. Fuck. Um, but you're also we're get, getting a face full of KMFDM. And you got the wisdom of like Sasha's 25 years worth and uh, the pigs and Lucia and they're very, very, very wise people. So we've been honored that uh, we're getting a lot of like rock training. It's like rock boot camp. And then we've also got their crew and their crew have worked with everyone. Um, and there's like in total there's 17 people on, on, on staff and it's just like uh, the guy who does our front of house work for Nine Inch Nails and the lighting guy worked for fucking everyone. So it's, it's just this massive amount of really talented, really smart people and it's, it's just awesome. Wonderful. I, I noticed on your blog you were putting uh, just like, you know, you're just being real honest about the show saying, you know, I wasn't sure if we rocked enough. And, yeah, well, it's... Um, you know, I, I mean, I how think, do you feel it's really been going? Um, I think it, it is going well. On my blogs, I'm always really honest because I want... There's always a young musician somewhere who goes, they go off stage and they go, I feel like shit. And, uh, you know, I, I want people to know that we feel like shit sometimes when we got off stage as well. Like last night in Detroit, we didn't feel like shit. It was fucking awesome. It was such a good gig. And, and um, Cincinnati was a really good gig as well. And... I just want to be really honest, like the people are always great, but you know, it's sometimes you've got to work really hard to break through that, to where well, you got to get the audience and you got to ring them until all the rock and roll comes out of them and then you cover it in your body and shit, but, um, so I, yeah, I'm being honest and it's, it's, it's a great, it's just a good experience. We're meeting so many people, it's, it's a real hive, a real buzz, a real thing. Great. Okay. <laughs> well, let's talk a little bit about your uh, your rig. If, uh, okay, cool. A guy named Steve Jones. Um, Steve Jones, Agent 13. He's like Australia's prime fucking uh, synth repair technician. He fixes old analog synths. And um, me and Steve sat down, because Steve tours the US and everywhere with bands like Kylie Minogue and NXS, and Steve's a rock star for rock stars. And, he was awesome enough to help us out with actually putting something together that was short and compact. And remember, all of this stuff had to fit on a plane with us, with all of our other shit, and fit into 90 kilograms. So that's why everything is, it's fast to pull down and it's light, because it all had to come from Australia. But uh, Steve and myself built this one, and it's, um, it's pretty awesome. He also helped me out with this one. Um, we laser cut it and he helped me out with that one. Steve's fucking great. Um, but yeah, the headset for Coder over here, uh, the, the audio signal being pulled, we've got one of the audio signals coming off here is the actual Vakoda track. Um, and I just used the headset mic to, um, to basically get the Vakoda working. Um, and the dope for this is just the best fucking Vakoda you can get your hands on. It's so crisp and it's so, it's really fast attacking. And you can also like cross route all the different um, bandwidths to get some really awesome shit happening. Uh, then the, we've got, uh, this is an A110 uh, oscillator. That one's coming off the Thurman. And this is the other A110 oscillator. So there's two oscillators being used. Um, that one there is modulating. This one is mainly a modulating uh, Thurman. Unfortunately, we don't have sound happening, but um, this mod this uh, VCO is used to fuck shit up. <laughs> it basically takes away from like a clear, easy sound and turns it into something really fucked up. Then there's the we're using a diode filter, which is the A102, which I reckon is the best fucking filter around. It's so good. The frequency and the um, resonance on this dude is just insane. You know, we we can blow speakers up with this fucker. It's just great. <laughs> Uh, and then other bits of shit as well, so, um... And how much live... Are you playing with this live, or does everything get controlled? Um, I'm playing with all of it live. Okay. Um, there's a lot of randomness going on. Like, um, each night it's like, what are we doing tonight? It's like, I don't know. Um, so there's a lot of noise and craziness, and our awesome sound guy, Doc, uh, who's um, with KMFDM, uh, he's, um, he's kind of 
keeping everything tame, um, not to let it get too crazy, because also, like Amelia over here, the Stryx is running the um, Chaos Pad, and that's just mainly her vocals. So she brings the obscene doom with that one. And that one's, I don't know, we, we fucked around with like MIDI syncing it and shit like that, but it was just, it started becoming leads and lines going everywhere. And the, the thing we have to do is set up fast, pull down fast so KMFDM can come on and just obliterate. So um, that's basically it. Now, what really about the set list? I heard you guys doing three different set we're doing, lists. We're doing six. Six. Um, we're, we're just sort of, um, we got, because we did this thing on our forum where, <laughs> we did this thing in our form where we asked everyone what they wanted and they came up with this list of like 30 songs. So we um, we took the most popular songs which were like 100%, Maggot, uh, Vina Kava and uh, Fuck the Revolution. And so we're doing those ones every night but then we're also alternating with stuff like um, Grind and stuff of all the different albums. And um, I don't know, it's working out really well because you get with KMFDM, you get a lot of people who follow them from city to city. So what we're doing is um, we're trying to give them as much different material as we possibly can. So to bring the rock in a wide kind of scope. Awesome. Can you talk a little bit about um, your software? I had a chance to actually listen to um, your latest CD and your last CD. I was, by the way, I'm very impressed with it. Um, very new, fresh sound that uh, a lot of people just aren't doing anymore. Um, Steve was telling me Software? That, um, yeah, yeah. No. Fuck you. <laughs> no, all right, I will. Um, we're using Cubase SX2 only because we can't afford to um, buy the new software. And I, I believe in buying software. I mean, fuck, if you don't, then there just comes a time when you've got to buy the software. So when we have enough money, we will update to five or wherever it's at at the moment. Um, as far as the audio and everything else, it's pretty basic, kind of. Um, we don't use many plugins. We use no soft sense. Everything is our analogs or whoever's analogs we can steal. We've got a great, we've got a big version of the dope for it's like that tall and that wide, and there's heaps of other shit in there. And uh, everything we do goes through that. And we were also really big on in this album. We wanted to get back to the the original roots of industrial and build instruments. Um, and everyone says that's been done, but I just don't give a shit. I think it's got to be done more often, and I think that's one of the important things about industrial music, is the character of it, um, in that here are pots and pans, and literally, one of the big instruments we, we, ba we built had two salad bowls in it, salad bowls in it, um, and they sound great. They're like just, they're built to, to, for acoustic resonators, so they sound fucking awesome. So bits of springs and all sorts of stuff, and smashing bits of submarines and awesomeness. Very cool. Very cool. Um, and the real thing we always try and do is not to have too many hurdy frequencies. Like, you know, um, around, you know, 2.83K and around 6K, it can hurt your ears a bit, so we're always pulling shit out there. And another thing to, that we're trying to do as well is keep away from um, just distortion. Like, trying different forms of distortion, like, uh, there's a really awesome dope from module called a, a 136 and a 137 and they're wave shapers and they instead of just clipping the sound like turning it up so loud it just clips it gets in there and it changes the the voltage shape of the waves and it's called a wave shaper and you can do fucking awesome stuff with this stuff um, also getting into you know bit crushes and all that sort of shit and another fun thing we've been doing I'm dragging the question out a bit is a thing called reamping, where you get uh, the guitarist plays the shit in um, straight out of the guitar, straight into your computer, so you get that pluck, 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 pluck sound, and then you fuck that signal up. So you might uh, frequency modulate, filter modulate, fuck it up somehow, then you put it through the big fucking box or Marshall amps or whatever you're using, and you mic them up, you don't put it through the pod, because that's boring, but you can if you want, <laughs> that's okay, um, and you get some really screaming crazy harmonics. And the guitarist can sometimes go, ah, too scary. Appreciate it very much. Again, Carl with Angel Spit, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yep, thanks for watching Razorblade TV. Razorblade TV.